Hello everyone, this is Chocolate here, and today I am going to be presenting to you my top 10 dragons from the Elder Scrolls series. Number 5 might surprise you. For number 10, I have chosen Nazlarum and Voslarum. These are two revered dragons that appear in the Forgotten Vale, bursting from an icy lake to ambush the last dragonborn on their hunt for Ariel's bow. The meanings of their names are unknown to man, but their power and ferociousness are no mystery. They are immune to the bend will shout and will not appear unless the dragon rising has been complete. For number 9, I have chosen Mirmolnir, whose name means Allegiance Strong Hunt. He is the first dragon slain by the last dragonborn and unwittingly aids them in discovering their true identity. He is also one of the few dragons not slain by the blades, therefore he has been flying across Tamriel since the Merithic era, making him one of the oldest living dragons. One interesting bit of his character is just before he dies he cries out, Dova King, no! I've interpreted this in two ways. Either he is disappointed that the dragonborn has chosen this path, or he is in dismay that he will never be able to fly across Tamriel again. 8. Volthyriel He is an ancient dragon in hiding, patrolling the vastness of Blackreach. If the dragonborn uses unrelenting force upon the large glowing orb within Blackreach, a call shall ring through the dark caverns summoning him. He won't attack unless he is attacked and after a while will take up a stationary position until development. He also does not enter aerial combat, but will instead fight the last dragonborn whilst on the ground. His name means Dark Overlord Fire, and personally I find it fascinating that a dragon could survive underground for so long. This brings into the question if he was imprisoned there by the Dwemer. 7. Sahrotar his will was bent by Mirak, and he has served him ever since, and though there appears to be a strange bond between the two, Sarotar has dreamed of defeating him once and for all. He is a powerful serpentine dragon. When under the influence of the Bend Will Shout, he will fly the last dragonborn through Apocrypha to finally defeat the first dragonborn himself. Although nothing is known about him, even the meaning of his name, he is one of the most powerful and deadly dragons. 6. Alduin the World Eater He is the firstborn of Akatosh, and frighteningly powerful dragon, who was sent forward in time to the fourth era by the heroes of old in an attempt to bring an end to his tyranny. Though he isn't considered evil by the races of men and myrrh, he is very loyal to the dragons and wishes to see his own kind flourish, which is actually quite admirable. At the beginning of the story, he unwittingly saves the last dragonborn's life, but also scorns the dragonborn for being arrogant and speaking in their tongue. His name translates to Destroy, Devour, Master, and upon his defeat, his body dissolves into Sovngarde. 5. Nephalalargus Though not as bright as the rest of his kind, his contributions to history cannot go overlooked. During the Second Era, this dragon served as the crowning jewel to Tiber Septum, and guards Prince Ator's soul gem in the catacombs of the Redguard island of Shosmakai. Tiber Septim bestowed much treasure upon this greedy dragon, which ended up being his downfall. Though Cyrus the Restless was able to defeat him, the fact that he was not a dragonborn placed the fact that he could one day be resurrected. The meaning of his name is unknown, but despite his inability to be compared to the strength of the rest of his kind, he was crafty and able to play to the will of mortals and earn their favor and trust. 4. Dernavir He's an undead dragon, but was not always cursed to guard the Soul Cairn. Long ago, during the Merithic era, he still lived amongst his kin in Tamriel. However, his fascination with necromancy and the undead caused him to be tricked to guard Valerisha, an immortal, and become the Watcher of the Soul Cairn, which would explain why his name means Curse Never Dying. However, it is unknown if this was his true name when he was free in Tamriel, as Valerisha explains to the dragonborn that he calls himself Dernavir. Upon his defeat by the last dragonborn, he gives them the ability to summon him to Tamriel, and teaches them all three words to Solter. 3. Numenex Once a power-hungry and merciless dragon, King Olaf one I shouted him into submission and imprisonment in Dragon's Reach, to humiliate him and keep him as a pet. He was kept in a confined space and driven completely mad to the point where he couldn't even remember his own name. Parthenex visited him during captivity, and watched as the once confident and majestic dragon was turned submissive, scared, and forgetful. 
Numenex actually died in captivity, and there are many theories to what truly led to his demise. One is that Parthenax killed him out of mercy and absorbed his soul to stop his kinmen's torture. There is also debate on the meaning of his name. Many believe that his name is Now Man Cruelty, or another one being Now I Won, as a foreshadow to the maker of his demise. His skull was hung over the throne in Dragon's Reach, and Olaf's plaque at the Palace of Kings mentions the battle with the once mighty dragon. 2. Parthenax He is referred to as the Old One by his kinsmen, and is the leader of the Greybeards. In the Merithic era, he served as Alduin's lieutenant, bringing destruction to the races of men in Myrrh. However, when Alduin claimed false godhood, he turned against his brother and began to teach the way of the Thum to mortals. Nordic legend also states that the divine Kinnereth herself intervened in bringing Parthenax out of his darkness. After the defeat of Alduin, if he was not killed by the blades, he makes it his mission to teach the other dragons the art of meditation on Thums, as he has done with the last dragonborn in the Greybeards. He is shown to be very empathetic, experienced, and intelligent, making him a perfect mentor for the last dragonborn and for the other dragons. Though the dragons are immortal, in his seclusion, Parthenax shows many signs of old age, as some of his wings are torn, and some of his teeth, claws, and scales are missing. He is the last son of Akatosh, and his name translates to Ambition, Overlord, Cruelty. 1. I had to choose Odaving, I mean he's my favorite. He was the right hand man to Alduin until the last dragonborn temporarily imprisoned him in Dragon's Reach and convinced him to fly them to Alduin's hiding place in Sovngarde. After Alduin is slain, Odavin pledges an alliance to the dragonborn as he now bears an untarnished respect for them. He can be seen circling around the throat of the world. Though Odavin looks upon Parthenax's teachings as a form of tyranny, he still wishes him luck in instructing the other dragons on how to meditate on the Thum. Not only is he a useful friend and companion, he is also an incredibly intelligent dragon with feelings and respect. I hope you enjoyed my list and found it helpful. Also, one of my subscribers found my Twitter, which I have linked to my channel. I'll put a link in the description so you can follow me, because I would love to have some awesome chats with you guys about Elder Scrolls, you guys are so awesome and supportive and amazing, and I am so grateful for that. Remember to like and subscribe. Bye!